With that said, I hope that's all the housekeeping we need. I'm just going to um, hand over to Reese, who's going to grill me on Casido. Um, he's been using for some time, and so it's a pleasure to have him here in person um, and to take a slightly different angle on this. Thank you, Ross. Um, can I ask you, first of all, what did you do before you became a barrister, and how did that inspire you with the idea of Casido? Well, uh, this is really where Casido came from. Um, I used to be, not that long ago, actually, it was um, back only less than 10 years ago, I was working as a um, video editor post in post-production generally in the film business. So I was a freelance um, post-producer and um, editor. So I, my job involved taking a whole load of digital data, video, and sorting through it and trying to find a story and to pull a story out of that, which actually is surprisingly similar to what we do as barristers in some cases. And when I moved to the, what happened was when I decided for various reasons to, to give that up and come to the bar, um, I found myself at law school and it was immediately presented with documentary data that was in paper form. And um, I have never been very organized with paper. I don't like paper. I, I got very organized with video on, on computers and I wanted to keep working in that way. And I assumed there would be a tool out there that would allow me to collect together a bunch of uh, paper documents on, on my computer, a bunch of PDFs essentially, and sort through them in a similar way that I could do with video clips. Um, because my video editors allowed me to take sort of thousands of video clips, terabytes of data, and very easily sort through it and organize it. And I wanted to do something similar in a very basic level. And I looked around, I thought there must be something. I looked at all the PDF editors, I realized eventually there was nothing that could do that basic job. Um, and so uh, we built it. Excellent. Okay. Well, could you show me what a, uh, a family law casino bundle would look like? Um, maybe. Let me, I'm going to hit you my screen share. Hopefully. Moments um, of reckoning. Exactly. Um, on Reese's advice, I have um, uh, tried to mock up what I think a family law bundle looks like. Um, so let's see what we think of this Reese. you can critique it as we go right this is it a... looks very pd 27a compliant to me <laughs> <laughs> well we, actually i've got pd 27a in here we ah right okay um this is a standard casino window uh as as you know with with a built bundle in it and what you can see here is casino is built of two main viewers you've got a green viewer and a purple viewer you don't have to have both you can you can simply view in one if you want um, or you could split that into two viewers for side-by-side -side viewing. And on the left, you can see the sort of spine or the index of the bundle. So this tells you what the different documents we've got organized in the way we have them organized. So you can see at the top, I've got a, uh, a table of contents. Then I've got a folder of instructions or an email from my client and, and practice direction 27A, thrown in there just for reference. And then I've got um, bundle A, or, or fight. Would, it, would it be a separate bundle normally, Reese? No, so it'd be folder A. It'd be folder A. Or division A. Division A of, of, of this, where I've got what I believe goes in division A. I'm, for, to, to, to full disclosure, I'm a, I have a tax practice. So I'm a tax barrister at um, Old Square Tax Chambers. I Any be. mistakes on the family law is my fault, not Ross's. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I am, um, yes, uh, this is all, all news to me, very exciting. Um, we, we have we have very very little formal directions in the tax tribunals, um, so everything's normally a horrible mess. Um, this is very organised. So we've got a folder of preliminary documents, doc bundle A, and then we've got B for applications and orders, a couple of things in there, um, C for statements, D for expert reports, and then miscellaneous or other at the bottom. I've thrown in what I've, I've called some correspondence. Now, of course, all these documents are. If I jump to correspondence, I, these are just mock-ups of mine um, to, to sort of play the role of documents in here. But you can see very easily how, how it's very easy to sort of jump and view the different documents we've got in our bundle. So this is something you, you've you already pre-prepared. Could you sort of talk us through, um, now that you've got your bundle, um, what you can do with it and what annotations you can make to it? Yeah, so the the basic, once you've, once you've got a collection of documents, you've got a, a range of the, the, the usual, probably you might call them, annotation tools. So I've got, if I, the one I use most is the bookmark tool, um, which is, and the, the, the main ones are added by these drag and drop tabs in the, in the top corners of your, of, your, of your window. There's three of them. The one on the top left is a bookmark tool. If I drag that onto a page, I can drop a bookmark on a document. 
And you see what that does is it immediately drops the bookmark on the page, but also lists it in the index here on the left under the document name. And so if I type in, type in there, um, you know, maybe if there's a case summary, I might want to type in facts. I can drop a bookmark where the facts are in that case summary. I can drop one in for grounds. I could drop one in for um, quantum, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see how I can very quickly drop bookmarks on the relevant parts of my, uh, my documents and begin to get a breakdown of those documents in the index on the left. So I can jump between those parts very easily. What about post-it notes? Post-it notes, we have a, a, so on the right hand here, we've got a little comments uh, tab, which we, again, we can drag and drop that on the side. And that drops a little post-it just there on the right. So um, there I can type whatever I want. Um, and so in Casido, the, sort of the equivalent of a paper post-it note is probably a combination of these two features in that dropping a bookmark gives you quick access to it from the index and dropping a comment gives you something you can write next to it. So I will often use these together. Sometimes if I just want a very short note, I'll just put it in here, but most often I'll have a bookmark and a comment, or sometimes obviously I'll just have a comment by itself. What about highlighting? Highlights is just as simple as dragging and selecting a color. So if I select any text in a document, I can give it a color. If I click it, I can change the color, I can delete it. So as I go through, you can read a document and, and mark up with these tools very easily. So um, another thing that quite, a, quite often one has in uh, instructions is a direction to counsel is referred um, to the, the statement of the applicant, for instance. And um, is there a way of jumping quickly um, from the, the, that point um, to another point in the bundle? Is there sort of hyperlinking? Yes, so that's, our, that's the third tool, drag and drop tool up in the top right corner, our links tool. So, so supposing you had your case summary and in the grounds you referred, say, to um, a particular paragraph referred to another part of the document. So you could drop that, you, you drop this link tab down there. I'll, I'll do that again. Drop, drag, drag onto the page and release. And what that does is it drops one end of a link on the page there. The other end sits up in the top right hand corner waiting for you. So I can now navigate to somewhere else. Let's say this was a reference to the experts report, um, um, the conclusion section even where I've already got a bookmark and I can then drop that other link end on the relevant paragraph. And this now gives me a two way link between those two places in the bundle so I can jump between them. And how does that work if you've got the split screen on? Well, in the split screen window, it, in a single window, it works the same way. But if I want to jump from this part and bring it up in another window, I can drag it across and release, and it will jump to the same window. Okay. So, so to, you know. Now, a recent feature that you've introduced, which I'm um, sadly very excited about, is your go to page feature at the top. Um, could you just talk us through that and, um, and talk us through it slowly? <laughs> okay, well, on, on, on the, we've, we're up at the top left here, we have a go to page button. And if I type in there A7, um, I will jump to page A7. So it's very simple. But, but I probably want to take a step back um, to talk about the go to page button and talk about pagination a bit more generally. Um, so down here in the bottom left, we've got a pagination on off button. And by clicking that, I can turn pagination on and off for my document. When it's off, I, I don't have a go to page button because there are no page numbers as far as we're concerned. Nothing's paginated yet. If I turn it on, what that does is it numbers every page. And, and there's various ways we can, we can do that numbering. Um, but it also brings up this go to page button. So there's, there's a couple of different modes for pagination. Um, we have a pagination type switch. So if, if the normal pagination mode starts um, at page one and runs all the way through the whole bundle, so the but if, if, you, if you go to the top of the spine there though, um, you may have a situation where you've got that email from the client and instructions um, and you don't want those paginated because the PD27A bundle really only starts 
from preliminary documents. So how do you make it start numbering from um, midway through the spine? Or, or well, perhaps the best way to do this, shall we start from the beginning? Can no, I take you back to, to um, where this all starts? I think before, maybe that, that's better before we get too involved in pagination. Okay. Um, unless you want to talk about search first. Which, which might okay, be, t tell us about search and then we'll, we'll perhaps build some bundles and you can show us how to put the pagination on as we're building the bundle perhaps. So we have, after the basic annotation tools, the thing I do most is, is use the search function and, and what this is is a basic search tool that can search all our documents together, so cross document search. So if I type in chronology or the beginning of the word chronology what that will do is it will search all the documents in this bundle and give me the next result and and you can see up here i can jump through them from result one the first result is in the table of contents there's a it, there's a re reference to it in in practice direction 27a um quite a few of them probably and then i can jump to the actual document the chronology document where it'll be listed a lot so you see, there's a very simple way of jumping between search results. If I wanted to look for a particular um, result in a, say I wanted to go to practice and I wanted to start the search in a particular document, what I can do is I can navigate to the search um, and run that same search again, but press enter and I will jump to the next result in the bundle. So you can also start your search mid halfway through if you want. Um, and I think search is, um, the more you use it, it I, I use it not only in fact for finding things, but just for sort of active highlighting. So often when I'm reading a document, I might just type in the word reasonable into the search field because you can see how um, it's quite nice when you're scanning through something to have all references to um, a particular word or, or, or name highlighted for you. So um, a really core tool in terms of, sort of the, the kind of active reading and, and getting around your bundle you can, you can do. Okay, so um, what do you want to do next? Do you want to talk through um, the numbering or do we want to try and make up a bundle? I think we'll do, let's, let's, let's make up a bundle and we can talk the numbering as we go. I think it'll be clearer that way. Okay, now can I, I'm going to um, give you a couple of scenarios. Um, mm. uh, before the lockdown, I may have had a lever arch file, which is effectively just scanned to me. So I've got a flat scan. That's one way I may receive um, uh, a, a huge PDF um, and be interested to see how that gets turned into this. Uh, and then it, another scenario might be to have a number of emails um, with attachments and maybe even the evil nesting attachments. And that needs sort of unscrambling and putting together. Um, could you perhaps show us how, how you might approach that in those different scenarios? Sure. So the first, the first thing, whenever you get a new case with Casido, the first thing to do is to create a new case file because the way Casido works is that it, um, it creates a new file on your computer for every matter you have. So, so whenever I start a new case, whenever I get new instructions, I create a new folder somewhere on my drive. I use OneDrive and Dropbox um, because that gives me cloud storage and access to them and backup, etc. But you create a new folder somewhere and you create a new case file. So in this case, can you see these the drop downs in the screen share? I, think, I trust you can. See uh, can what you drop see downs? The, the file sorry. save drop down. No, I can't. No, you can't. Okay, that's that. What I'm going to do to to jump, I'm just going to stop the screen share in that case, um, and share and not just the video but my whole desktop because then you should be able to see a bit more of what's going on. Right. So here you've got my desktop, and if I so for every time I wanted to create a new case file, I'll go up to the file menu and, and hit new case, and this will ask me what I want to do um, with where I want to save the new file. So I'm going to call this webinar um, bundle two, and and create it. And that what that does is it creates a new file on, on my computer. It's currently empty. It's a shell, basically. It's a conceded, an empty case file. And this is where I'm going to import all that data I was working on. So the first thing I want to do is import some documents. And if, as you say, you've been sent a flat scan, here's, here's an example of the bundle we were looking at before, but as if it had been sent to you just scanned um, with, with no 
uh, with no markup at all, someone that your, your clerks would run this through the scanner all as one document. So I'm going to bring this in. And all I get there is a single PDF. I just asked, what did you do there? Where you where you dragged it from the desk space further up? What what what's that? So mean? all all new files appear here in the desk space down the bottom left. The point of the desk space is that it is an unorganised space where things when you import things or create new folders, that's where they that's where they start. Hang on, I'm, I'm so just um, I'm just gonna uh, we uh, we're gonna admit. A couple more people in the waiting room, so I've just spotted. Hello to the couple of new people joining us, and welcome. We're just looking at how you can create a bundle um, from a flat scan in Casido. Um, so what I've got here is a, a scan, and I've, I've just imported it into my desk space in the bottom left corner. Um, and, and as I said, the, the, you, you can do pretty much everything in the desk space you can do in the, in the main bundle index. But the idea is that this is somewhere where you don't have to keep tidy. And the top is where you can build an actual um, tidy, well-organized court bundle or, or um, council's file or whatever it is you want to, you're using it for. So the first thing I would do in this case is drag it up to the top left here. And, and what I'm looking at is just a single file. So that's the whole thing, not very usefully organized. Um, this one's been created in Casido, so it's got page numbers on it, but, but it's not hugely useful to me here because it's a, simply a scan. So what I would do is I would go through this and I would start breaking it up. So I'd go to the bottom of the, here we've got the index file, and I'll go to the bottom and I would, I would click this split documents button that you have between every page in a document. Um, and I would say this is going to be, the next document here is going to be the case summary. Um, and I would hit split. And what that does is it cuts off, cuts the document in two at that point. So now actually I want to rename, by double clicking the name in the index, I can call this index. And I've got my case summary and that goes on for a couple of pages to statement of issues. And again, I can click between the pages here and type statement of issues. And I would do this as I go. So the way I work is if I'm sent a, in my context, I normally get this in the context of a witness statement or something where you have a witness statement with lots of exhibits and they're all sent to you as a flat scan. I would go through it and I wouldn't just, I would probably at the same time as I'm going through the bundle for the first time, I would be highlighting relevant passages. Um, oh, actually I can't highlight this at the moment because it's a flat scan. So that's something else we can talk about. Um, in a second, I, I would be highlighting it, adding um, bookmarks, maybe to say, um, you know, facts or different sections of this of this statement of issues. Um, I might be adding comments if I thought there was interesting things going on. Can I just mention about um, the, uh, the being able to highlight uh, uh, and also the the the, um, the the splitting function? In order to be able to highlight, the um, the document needs to be OCR'd, doesn't it? It needs to have optical character recognition. That's right. Uh, and um, a, a lot of people um, uh, use Adobe Acrobat Pro um, for optical character recognition. And uh, I'll just tell you how I use um, Casido. I have... Uh, Adobe Acrobat Pro in the background. I sort of use it as my back room for doing uh, OCRing. Um, I, I do appreciate that Casido has OCRing, but I don't think you've ever um, sort of uh, advertised Casido as being able to do lots of heavy, heavy OCRing. It can do a few pages if you just drag something in, but it, it, it's probably useful from from where I'm coming from to do your OCRing. Um, elsewhere and then import pre OCR documents into the Casido space. That's right. Yeah, I, I um, as a rule, I never have, have any, bring anything into Casido that doesn't have machine readable text in it that isn't OCR'd already. So obviously, a lot of things are generated from computers and don't need OCRing, but scans do. Um, Casido, if I take any document here, I can right click it and recognize the text, and this will take that take that document there, the case summary, and it will process it um, and uh, turn it into machine readable text, which will allow me to highlight it and search it. And it's because I, often, I do so much highlighting and so much searching in Casido that I, I insist that everything in Casido has text in it. I think it's really important. And it's, it's the main thing I use Acrobat Pro for. And I think 
um, some people say, oh, is Casido a replacement for PDF Expert or Acrobat? And I think the answer is definitely no to that. They, the the um, PDF editors are like like Acrobat or Expert are, are powerful tools in their own right. They're, they're great for the use of things like forms. They're great for converting to Word documents. They're great for all sorts of things you want to do with PDFs. Um, Casido has a slightly different role and works in a complementary way to them in that it's a, it's a much more flexible viewer. It's a much more flexible way of building a, a bundle of, of documents rather than doing things to particular documents. Can I just mention uh, another little um, hack that I've developed with uh, the way in which I work with Casido, which is um, because I'm using Adobe Acrobat anyway, and uh, before your um, cutting feature was introduced, I got into the habit of cutting and splitting my documents in Adobe Acrobat. A and what that means is that um, in my OneDrive, I've got a clean set of um, PDFs um, separate to Casido. So that if, for instance, somebody um, at court needs uh, a document, if the court needs it, um, sending to them or something, I've got that as an additional version of the documents. Now, I appreciate that you're not obliged to do that, but that, that works for me. So here I've got my case bundle, um, and I would continue carrying on through here. Um, so I've got my statement of issues. When I got to the bottom of that, I would chop off the chronology. Um, and as, as I go, I would say, well, this is, these are all part A documents. So what I'm going to do back down in my desk space, I'm going to click the add folder button and call this preliminary docs. Um, and I'm going to now start adding folders. And I think, you know, you can add folders, you can add subfolders in Casido. Again, they're very useful for creating not just grouping things together so you can minimize them, but also it helps you scan your bundle, helps you find stuff really quickly if you do use folders actively. Um, and so you can see, let's... Uh, hit it also allows you to close things. So if you've got... Um, a lot of documents in play but it's only a particular part of the bundle that you're looking at you can close your other folders and have that one bit open exactly so here i'm going to add a, another folder for applications it is applications next isn't it yes um just while you're doing that um uh, another um uh, another point to uh, ponder um what what we, you're doing here um, is your your splitting documents rather than just flagging a a solid PDF? So when I started before I was using Casido, I might have a thousand page um, bundle, and and I was just flagging it rather than um, splitting the uh, documents down. Um, can you? Um, tell me um, what the advantages are for, for splitting documents and then flagging afterwards? Well, so it's partly about hierarchy. So you can see here, I've got a folder with the different documents in, uh, and it means that you can, you know, if, if I create, I could create a new folder for the whole bundle and I could put them inside it and things like that. So I could create a, a folder hierarchy of some kind. It's also mainly because they are separate documents and you might want to reorder them. So for example, here, um, I've been working through this chronology, this, this scanned bundle, and I've got, to, um, I've got to the end of section B on applications. And the next document in the scan is section D, um, which is wrong. Um, it should be, this is a genuine mistake actually. Um, <laughs> Um, and this is and this is in the wrong order. Um, now, if this was a PDF um, and I was just marking up a PDF or using flags, um, I could maybe in a PDF I could put the flags in the wrong order, so you could the flags would come to the right order, the bookmarks. But I couldn't actually fix this problem. Whereas if if I just carry on splitting these into separate documents, I get to the bottom of the expert evidence and come back to first statement of applicant and I'm going to create a folder for um, statements forgive my spelling I can now put these in order very easily um, and I've got my expert reports are now down there and I can go and I can carry on and I can split these again into that's a statement of service I do um, 
I do I do find that um, when additional things come in, so you know sometimes I'll get sent some papers, I'll be sent a bundle, and then I'll be uh, it's an unsigned statement, uh, and then I'm sent the signed version, uh, and I find this particularly handy in just being able to drag and drop a, a document out of the spine and just to um, delete it and then and then bring the, the fresh one in so that it, it sort of works a bit more like a lever arch file that you can you can open it at a particular point and put something new in and and then um, you know it keeps everything nice and mm. apple pie yeah and it means so, so now so I've got to the end I'll leave all my correspondence as one document maybe I'd want to do that maybe I wouldn't um, but there it is um, I, I've got the beginnings of my bundle now this is probably where we'd want to bring pagination into play because I haven't so far turned pagination on. What we do a lot is just five folders and an index. But if I hit the pagination button in the bottom left, what that's going to do is, is bring pag put pagination on onto the bottom right of the pages. It brings up my go-to page. But you can see a couple of things. Firstly, the index is paginated, which probably we don't want. Um, and secondly, the pagination starts at, start, runs the whole way through. So it doesn't restart at the beginning of each section. So the first one we want to do is not paginate our index. And we can do that by right clicking it and choosing do not paginate. And that will simply not paginate that page. And the pagination now starts on the next page. And the second thing we can do is we can go up here into the edit page and toggle the pagination type. And that's what turns on the sort of what we, we might call in this context the family law pagination system, um, folder-based pagination. And what that does is it adds a letter to each of my top-level folders. It doesn't affect subfolders. So if I add a subfolder in um, to, to a, a, a folder, it, it doesn't give that a new letter. It's just the top level. It gives those all a new, a new letter and it, and it paginates them. So you can now see, in fact, if we, as we turn pagination, you can now see the pagination is beginning to match what it's supposed to match in that flat scan, which is good. Um, and if we jump to B here, we can see that B1 is now B1, because you can see these already have the pagination on from the export. Um, so there we have you know, a basic, and you, you might want to not paginate other documents. So you can just say, do not paginate the skeleton, and that will just then miss out the skeleton as far as pagination is concerned. What if I've, um, as is often the case, I've got some of my preliminary documents, and then an additional um, preliminary document comes in, and, and, and quite often in the run-up to a hearing, you'll be getting fresh indexes with you know the other side skeleton added or or something else added and um, if you if you put a new pull a new document in to this pagination does that upset the um the way in which the pagination works um well that's up to you so let, let's say i take a new document and i say i've got some of some additional documents here so i've got an email from a client and some more correspondence which they've sent me i can import those documents and they'll appear in my desk space down here and I might, let's, let's call them new correspondence. Um, we'll just create a new file for them. Uh, and we're going to put, we've got correspondence two and correspondence three. So we want to put those, let's say we want to put those at, at the beginning of our other folder. So they want to go in above this file. Now this is supposed to be page E1. Um, if we put it above above that document it's now going to be page e7 so we've messed up the pagination and what we want is for these pad pages the new ones to be paginated as an insert so if, if we right click them and say paginate as an insert what we'll see is those are changed to a different pagination so they're now page 0 0.1 all the way to 0 0.2 0 0.3 and then the second document is 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 I, I think i'm right in saying aren't i that the way in which you're insertions work are um, precisely how the remote family court guide appendix one paragraph 20 to be precise requires them to work oh, well I'm, I'm not going to challenge you on the appendix <laughs> uh, yes um we you know obviously a lot of us are used to using inserts with the sort of a you know page 26a page 26b we thought about that it's just not a very sensible thing to do in terms of scaling up um, and um, we can, uh, and it, 
it, it means that once you get over 26 new pages, you're into sort of AA, are you into 26 AA or 26 ZA? There's a lot of questions there. Um, so I've just been asked, uh, how do you number the files, uh, bundles as ABC, et cetera? So just to show you that again, um, or, uh, unless I'm late to this question, you do that by going to the edit pagination, toggle pagination type menu. So if I turn that off, I go back to normal pagination type. And that means that the bundle numbering, numbering runs all the way through. If, if I toggle it back on, we go back to the same mode, ABC. And you can see, anyway, I also just to show you back, back on this insert thing, you've got a little plus here. That means this is an inserted document and is paginated as an insert. So if I take this folder and I wanted to say, actually, it wasn't correspondence, it was supposed to be in the applications folder, I can drop that in to the B folder. And you can see now I, those pages are B3.1, B3.2. And I haven't, wherever I move this now, I'm not going to mess up the pagination at all because they're inserts. So I can drop them wherever I want and all the other page numbers will stay the same. And the same is true. If I've got this email from a client and I want to, I, what I would do is I would say, I don't want to paginate this because it's not going to, I don't really want to, um, to it's, it's, I don't, maybe I, this is something I don't actually want to be in my bundle. It's not in the bundle at all, but, but I want to drop it in. Maybe I'll drop it in right at the top um, because it's some instructions or maybe I'll say actually it's relevant to uh, the, their first statement. So I'm going to drop it in just after the first statement. So I've got it there nearby in case I want it, but it's not paginated. And so it sort of gets missed out of the bundle, really. And um, now what, what we've been doing over the last um, 10 minutes or so is, is looking at creating a trial bundle, um, which uh, is something which is very important to family lawyers, but also um, aside from the trial bundle, the PD27A bundle, we, we may have what I'd call counsel's bundle. And it may be that that starts um, weeks or even months before a trial bundle works up uh, um, uh, is, is sent. And, and I wonder if you've got any observations as to how Casido works for counsel's bundle. Well, this is actually how mostly I, I use it. I mean, I'm with a tax practice, I see myself in court <laughs> once a month at, at, at most. Um, it's quite a rare occurrence. Most of my work's advisory, most of it is very long running over a long period of time. Um, and so, you know, to, to, to show you, go you back, most of my cases look like this one. Um, something like this, where you can see here, I've got various different stages in the case. Um, and then I've got a folder full of legislation and a folder of case law, maybe some books. Um, that I want to look at. And I've got a bunch of other stuff down in my desk space that's not particularly relevant anymore, but I keep it lying around. So I'll just show you a different way of building bundle as opposed to starting with a scan. Um, the way I would normally end up building a, um, a bundle is to, I'm just going to create a new folder, is to create a, um, we'll call it counsel's bundle, is I would create a new case file for every matter that I come in. And into that, I would import all the relevant documents. So in my case, I might be sent a bunch of documents like this attached to an email, um, and I would bring them in. And they would all pop up down here um, as separate documents. So that's a couple of Word documents, some PDFs, um, and I might call this, I might put that just for now in a folder called bundle. You say Word documents. If you, if you bring the Word document into Casido, what happens to it? It gets, what's happening in the background is it getting cop, it's essentially getting converted to a PDF and copied into the case file. So whenever you import one of these documents, like a document like this into um, Casido, it gets copied. So the end, the end, the file you're making, um, ends up containing all this information. You end up that single case file. You, if you email it, it will have all the documents in it. Um, and you can see anyway, what I'm trying to do here. And so it makes it very easy to share. I'm just going to try and briefly pull these into the similar order. I might, let's, let's create a few more folders called A, B. Um, this, for example, this is how I might work if I was sent a bunch of things from I'll drop that up there. 
hopefully I'm not going too so just far. while you're doing that I've been asked a question and if you import a document which is a scanned document you need to take it through Adobe DC first and I think my answer to that would be that if you had a thousand pages I probably would OCR that um, through Adobe DC and um, if I had um, some short additional statement of say no more than 10 pages I could just drag it into Casido and use the uh, recognized text function in Casido. Um, but for, for something that's much bigger than that, um, then it, it, Adobe just does the, the text recognizing more quickly. Exactly. Our, our, um, our text recognition in Casido is, um, it's just, the, the only problem is it is quite slow. Um, so it takes up to, depending on the document, but up to actually a page a minute. Um, so it's it's useful for small things when you've thrown them in and, and you need to sort of fix them up, but it's not so useful for yeah. the longer form. Another question that, that's just come into me um, is, can you copy in and paste an entire case file into a separate case file? Yes, you can. So if I go back, that, that, that might be, you know, so if I go here and I go to the one we just were looking at, our family law bundle, um, the, uh, what were we working on? Blatt.case. Um, if I open that, I import that in exactly the same way as I import the previous, any other file, just using the import file file button there. You can see that brings in what we were building um, in the previous example. And I can delete that, obviously. Um, so often I have you know, various case files for, for specific legal matters. Um, that where well, I collect uh, legislation and that sort of thing um, together and, and I import the relevant law into, into my bundle every time. The solicitor is asking um, if uh, she were to make up a bundle uh, using Casido, um, can she send that to council? Yes. Um, so there's a couple of things here. It's good, good, good question, Harry, actually, because I want to show off um, one more thing. Um, which is actually um, so here I've very quickly built up this case bundle from the individual files that I have. So this is what a situation a solicitor might find themselves in more easily. I'm just going to bring in um, evidence E. And what? So firstly, here's something to show you. What, I'm importing this expert evidence, um, and it's asking me, do I want to import bookmarks with it? So these PDFs have bookmarks on them already. And what it means, when I import those, I can choose to bring in those bookmarks at the same time as I import them, which saves so me. So if, if, if you had a, a sort of a, something that had been made up by bundle docs or something like that. Exactly. And, and then you wanted to use that in Casido, you can. Yes. Um, uh, to, to demonstrate that exact thing. If I go, I have one of those here. So I've got a prepped, fat, the same case file we've been working on, but prepped as if it was made up in bundle docs. And you can yeah. see it asks me to import bookmarks. And when I do, it comes through here and you've got the index part A with the sections, part B with the sections, all the documents there. So that's a way you can import a fully marked up bundle like that. So um, a supplementary, uh, not to sort of uh, overly distract you, but a supplementary to the question asked by the, a solicitor a moment ago is um, if you've made something up in a, a Casido file, could you then send it to court? So, in terms of getting this out of Casido, at the moment you've got two options. Uh, one is you can simply send the Casido file to counsel um, or potentially to the judge. Um, that's the best way in that you're going to get, bring up all your markup and, and important, you're, you're going to bring this up in the most flexible way and you're going to send them, you're going to give them all the advantages of doing this in Casido accessible to them. Um, of course, if you're sending it to court or the other side, you may not want to include all your annotations. You, in fact, you almost certainly don't want to include your annotations, your highlights, your comments, your links. To do that, what you can do is you can, um, let's say if I, if I drop a comment on here and highlight something, um, you know, if I say bad for us, you know, the kind of comments you wouldn't want to share. Um, <laughs> With, with the judge. If you go to file, you can save a clean case. So if I choose this option, it will ask me to save it um, as a clean version. 
And what that will do is simply take off all markup except for um, bookmarks. So it leaves bookmarks on, but it takes off comments and highlights and links. But how, how do you, how do people who don't have Casido um, then um, take, take advantage of the, the prepping that's been done in Casido? So if you don't have Casido at the moment, the best we can offer is you can simply print it. And you, if I hit print here, what it will do is it will process the pages for print, um, send it to the printer, and then I can save it as a PDF. Um, that's not ideal because it, what it won't do is bring through any of your markup onto that PDF. So if you send that PDF, it won't have the index and everything with it. Um, however, that feature is coming very soon. We, our developers are working on that right now. So the next release coming in, hopefully a couple of weeks, will enable you to export this entire bundle as a marked up PDF with all your bookmarks in place. So what you'll be able to do is just hit export to PDF and it will create a PDF that has all these, um, the, the folders, the document names, and the, um, the bookmark you've added yourselves. Um, as hierarchical bookmarks within a PDF document. So it'll kick something out. We, something which I, it's not a question, but a comment which I'd, I'd like to make is I, I've been very impressed as, as you've worked through your the beta version of this and that you're very receptive to feedback. And I've, I've come back to you with a number of suggestions which um, you, you never take critically. You're always interested to hear how it's working on the ground and then and then build that into future development. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm, um, I, I use this every day myself in practice. I'm probably the most frustrated with it of anybody. Um, we've got a huge, like, so much we want to do to develop it. But, and, and it's really helpful. You, a lot of our users give us really great feedback about what they want next. So what's coming next is, um, well, the first thing's coming next is something I can show you now because actually this is an alpha build. So what I want to show you now for this, especially for the solicitors amongst you, is the, of course, if you want to export this out as a PDF um, or even send it to a printer, you're going to want to create a table of contents. At the moment, we don't have that. We've imported all the documents. We've done. Our latest feature is this button down here, just at the bottom of the desk space, where I can add a table of contents. So if I click that, what it does is it simply generates for me a table of contents. And this is not showing anything at the moment because it's in the desk space. But when I drag it up, I can put it anywhere in my bundle. And what that will do is create a bundle uh, index there. Excellent. Um, you, so a number of questions coming through um, uh, as we get to the end now about how, how one uses this in court. And um, it's right, isn't it? At present, this is something that you only use on a PC. So if you, so for instance, when I'm in court, I, I have my PC uh, on to have um, this open, and then I have my um, iPad as a, a, a second electronic device, which I can do other bits and pieces on. Um, are there any plans to make it available on an iPad in the future? Yes, our iPad is probably the thing people want most. Unfortunately, it's the hardest thing for us to produce because it's a whole new version of the software. So I use Casido in court. And these days, when I go to court, I take with me nothing else. I just take my laptop um, with my Casido file on it. Um, if, you have a, if you're a Windows user you can, and you have a Surface Pro, you can use Casido um, on a tablet in, in that capacity because the Windows machines you know, just run this that way. Um, but there's no iPad version per se at the moment. Um, and although we want to do it as soon as possible, it's realistically not, sort of, it's not this year. Um, so, no. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting question, obviously. Uh, Reese, is your, most of your advocacy standing up? Uh, no, funnily enough, um, most of my advocacy would be sitting down. Yeah, mine too. Um, I mean, I'm, so which, which, works, well, I which works well, actually, because then you can see the screen. And I found in cases, uh, I have done um, uh, several cases where I'm standing up with it. And, um, uh, and I've also got a screen protector um, for mm. privacy on the train and things like that. So you, you've got to make sure that your, your laptop's at the right angle to be able to see it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I'm, I've, been, I've been experimenting recently with using the, um, an iPad as the second screen 
on my on my laptop so you can now use as a sort of you can use an ipad as a screen extension which is quite an interesting um concept with casido and gets you extra place i've known we've known some users who've actually taken a second screen into hearings um but when they've you know had a three-day trial they've actually brought in a second screen to go with their laptop and given themselves that extra screen space um, um which, so, yeah. Several other questions. I'm, I'm, I'm being bombarded with questions at the moment, so I'm going to have to try and sort of pull them together. But I think um, a number of queries are, can, can I do this on one computer and then take it to court on another computer? Or um, is a license uh, per person or is it per firm? Um, and, you know, what, how, how does... How, how does one license a copy of Casido and what versatility does that give you? I think that well, drags a lot of the questions. Yeah, so, so the licensing first, the licenses are per person. So if you've got multiple machines, you, you can install the Casido on multiple machines. There's no problem about that. And, and in fact, that's how I work. So in my um, in Chambers, I have a desktop machine where I work most of the time. I save all my files to Dropbox or, or OneDrive on that computer, which means when I go home and pick up my laptop, they've all synced across, and I could just open up the same file and start off as if I hadn't left, you know, as if I had never put anything down. It's, it's really it creates a really fluid system for switching between um, home and home and chambers working. In fact, one of the things you know people are you know you've probably all been asked it how has how has this you know the the lockdown affected your practice. And I have to say, actually, not very much, because I have all my case papers from every case I've ever worked on, um, one click away, on, on my on my laptop as soon as I went home with it, um, and and I and I have a second screen anyway. So I've set myself up, and I, I'm carrying on working as normal. Um, and I think so. Some of those advantages of of moving between multiple machines are are are, re are really helpful. Okay, um, Ross, we're, we're, we've been 50 minutes at this now, so I oh, think wow. we're probably, um, time flies when one's enjoying oneself, eh? But um, are there any uh, final things that you'd like to say about the product, or have we covered that in, in all the questions and the things that you've shown us? Um, I don't think so. I think, we, you know, we've covered most of the features. Um, I, you know, I think that my, my the takeaway message I, I like to emphasize with Casido is, is how flexible it is. We've been looking at it very much in the context of sort of court bundles um, and the practice direction. We, you know, I, I, for example, I was going to show you how mostly I would create a folder with legislation in and, and, and bring in all my other work that isn't part of a hearing bundle and have it side by side in Casido because for that kind of analysis, um, it's really useful to have everything together, not just the evidence bundle. Um, but it's it's a very flexible workspace. You can use it for really small projects. You can use it for really long running things. Um, and it's it's interesting. I mean, I have the time speaking with you, Reese. How differently you use it to me, um, for example. And and that's um, something I'm. It's one of the reasons I want to keep in touch with. I use this so much because and, and I think it's fair to say that um I, because I'm more of a court user um than you are. Um, you've been very receptive to um, some of my suggestions to make it work faster when you're in court. So it's one thing to be um, in the luxury of your ch your mm. tax chambers scrolling through documents, but if you're if you're on the front line and needing to jump around the bundle, um, then um, you need to move move things quickly. And I know you've been very receptive and helpful in in making that possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, last thing I would say is obviously there's a free 30 day trial for any of you who haven't yet signed up. Um, you can just go on our website, you sign up for a 30 day trial license and then download the software. Um, so you can do that now. We, as I mentioned, hinted, we've got a new version coming in a couple of weeks, which will have table of contents building in it. This feature you can see here on the right and also um, proper export to PDF. So you'll be able to export a court compliant e-bundle. Um, at the click of a button so that will be a huge step forward also it will also mean if those of you who want to work on an ipad in say pdf expert will be able to export from casido to a pdf that you can then you know pick up on an ipad where you left off and start and continue annotating on an ipad which i think will uh, make a big difference we've also got a bunch of stuff like page rotations and password protected pdfs feet capabilities and stuff coming so um we're, we're moving as fast as we can
excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning, Ross. Um, that's been fascinating. I always uh, uh, learn a lot listening to uh, the way in which you use it, and uh, I found that very interesting. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Reese, for your time. It's been it's been great.